All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are talking about the winter protection of fig trees. And now that we're really close to the spring, it's the end of February, uh, we're not exactly in the spring just yet. I am here located in the Philadelphia area, zone 7A. And instead of actually talking about the protection of them, I wanna talk about the results of protecting my fig trees this winter. And a particular method that we used which is essentially we took these branches in the fall and the winter time that were straight up in the air. As you can see, this one right here is plopped up really nicely as I've uncovered it. We basically bent this over to the ground as close as we could and we stapled them or staked them to the ground with these garden staples. And so I have two sizes here anywhere from three to six inches depending on what staple I used. And that kept them really close to the ground. It's amazing how pliable and easy it is to bend our fig trees even in the winter time and in the fall, um, after they've already grown quite a bit the prior growing season. And so then after I, I got them really close to the ground, I covered them with wood chips. I got a load of wood chips delivered and just covered this whole planting here. In fact, over 100 in-ground fig trees, trees that I have planted here in the ground in the Philadelphia area. And so now I'm uncovering them. And why am I uncovering them? Because it's just so warm. This winter time in the Northeast has been very mild. I know some of you guys in the middle of the country, it's not been mild for you. Uh, but for us, it's been extremely mild to the point where it's almost too warm. And in fact, when you cover branches and trees with wood chips, um, it's one of the things that a lot of savvy gardeners know is that if you have wood chips buried up against the trunk of your trees, well, you wanna make sure those wood chips are away from the trunk because if they're not, those wood chips in warmer temperatures and times of higher amounts of moisture, that can rot the bark and kill your tree of whatever it is that you have planted, not just fig trees, but other species as well. And so I was seeing some rot here actually because it's been so warm and because I did not cover this like I had prior in prior years with a tarp. So in the past, we would do something called the cut and cover method. I'm sure some of you guys who follow me are familiar with that, where instead of you know having this branch here that is, let's say, three feet in height as this one is, I would cut this back to six to 12 inches, cover everything with straw the best I could, and then cover that with a tarp. And as I've learned in the past, actually, that was just not enough. I, I really thought that was going to be enough winter protection. We did that for multiple years. We also had the anticipation of, as we protected them, to throw low tunnels over top. If you guys recall some of my low tunnel videos, where in the past we've set up a low tunnel over top of this bed and actually multiple beds I have with fig trees planted at a very high density, where it's a six foot wide tunnel by three feet height, three feet in height. And so what that does is it creates a greenhouse environment that warms up the soil really early in the spring to give these fig trees a nice early head start to the season. And so I was not seeing any success with that method. It didn't make any sense to me because I should. And I wondered, oh, maybe it's the soil moisture. Maybe I have to really water the trees. Last year, I tried mulching the trees with a lot of leaves to see if that would work. And then it finally dawned on me that I was just not seeing the winter protection that I thought I was. I thought I was getting that winter protection. I thought the trees would survive the winter and they weren't. So now this year I took it an extra step. And as I said, we bent these branches over all the way to the ground. You can see some of them are already, even though I've uncovered them, they're still, you know, they want to stay along the ground because of those stakes that we had. And then we just covered them. And this basically guaranteed that I had close to 100% survival of every tree I have here planted. And it has um, certainly worked. So let me show you guys the results now. Um, as I said, one of the things I was worried about is actually the rot. And so I'll show you an example of that as we go through. Most of the trees look pretty much spotless. In fact, you could see that the growth tips are still intact. The lateral buds are still intact. And this is what we want. This is critical because the more of these buds higher up on the branches, if we don't prune them, they don't get killed by the cold, these could very easily plop back up straight or I could stake them. And they're gonna put out a lot of fruit very easily. You can see this is a really nice branch here on a variety I think called the Magdalene, if I'm not mistaken. 
Now this branch over here did actually take some damage. And this looks like, it's not that it wasn't buried necessarily, but for whatever reason, maybe this tree took a little bit of damage in the fall while I was letting them go dormant. And that's how that one looks in particular. We also see down here, here's a tree where it's rotted. And so the top of this was underneath the soil, covered in wood chips. And as I said, that moisture, that heat has rotted this branch. And you can see that right there. You'll, you'll tell very easily by what is thick or what is strong and hard wood versus what is obviously very flimsy. There's visual indicators as well. You can see that the base of this tree here was protected, but this part of it was not. And this was uncovered from the wood chips. This took damage and also maybe has some rot there. So even though this branch, as an example, has survived, the tip here has not. This has rotted up here. But this part of the branch down here now has damage. So it's critical, I think, when doing this method to protect the entire branch. Because you can clearly see here in the yard basically what wasn't protected by the color of the wood. This is a black Madeira. And you can see by the color of that wood, it's brown or it's red. If I do the scratch test, it's dead. So this part of the wood is dead, but everything that was, was underneath the soil is alive. And by the time this tree actually wakes up, this whole branch will be dead. Um, unless there is a part of this branch that is alive that goes all the way up to this point to give it water and nutrients from the roots. Um, so that's, I think, the main message. What I want to do in the future when I do this method is either one, cover this whole thing with a tarp, as I've said, or only choose really thick branches when doing this because the thicker the wood, I've noted the lower the chance and the lower I've seen the amount of rot. And so if the branches were very thin, they obviously have a higher chance to rot as I would have suspect, suspected, as probably a lot of you would have suspected. That's exactly what I'm seeing here in the yard. Here's another tree actually that was just planted in the fall, took some damage probably this fall from the cold that we, we saw about 20 degrees Fahrenheit before I covered these trees. And so that's what this little bit of damage here is at the top. But the rest of this that was buried, it looks great. There does look, appear to be some damage down here. And some of the trees, another thing is that they plop themselves back up throughout the winter time. Um, some of them did get uncovered as the stakes that I'm using were not enough for some of them to keep them down close to the soil. And so that's kind of the results. Now, what is the, the next step with this? Where am I going with this? Well, my plan is to take a branch like this and we're gonna put a tunnel over top of this. But you can see that this is just too tall for a tunnel. The tunnel is gonna be probably up to here. So this is gonna be at the top of the tunnel and that's just not, that's not good. So my plan now is actually to take this branch and stake it with bamboo and tie it off and keep it rather low. Even though this one has plopped itself back up, a lot of them are still very low at this point. And so any of them that are high like this, I stake them low, throw the tunnel over top, and that's gonna obviously preserve the wood here. I don't wanna prune this. I don't wanna keep it smaller. Even if there was a low tunnel, even if I had a, a greenhouse over top of all of these, I wanna keep these buds intact because this is what's gonna guarantee me fruit. In fact, this branch or this particular variety is uh, I think St. Martin. And this would actually, I think, even produce Braba. So we're gonna probably get Braba off of this. And keeping these buds intact, that's gonna ensure that I get fruit set and higher quality fruits and earlier fruits. Then we throw the low tunnels over top after staking them, hoping that the, the low tunnel system that I thought of years ago is actually gonna get a fair shot. And so then we'll really get to know at that point how early the figs can ripen versus having a low tunnel over top of them versus not. And so if we can get these to ripen by the middle of July, I'll be very happy because a fig that is protected and has all of its buds intact as if we had wrapped it perhaps, or even if I just plop this up straight and continue growing on without any head start to the season, most of them are gonna ripen around August 1st, August 15th here in the Philadelphia area. So if we can buy ourselves about two to four weeks, I'll be real happy getting fruit, main crop fruit, 
in July. So that's where we're going. That's the results of this method. Um, that's how we can improve it. I thank you guys for watching. Check out the blog, figboss.com. I'm gonna write something up on this if I haven't already. Check it out, figboss.com. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.